Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to yet another Python tutorial. So today's video is going to be the start of a very interesting series, which is going to be creating a college management system using Python. So just to let you guys know, this system is going to be a command line based application, which means it's not going to have a graphical user interface. We might do a series on that in the future. So this series is going to actually be using a MySQL database to store all information, retrieve information, edit information, and delete information related to the college system. Cool. So this is based on what we learned in my previous tutorials about how to use MySQL and manipulate a database using Python. So I'm going to be linking um, a couple of tutorials in the description if you are not familiar with MySQL. So go ahead and watch those first. And if you have a bit of an idea of how MySQL works, you can carry on with me now. So first off, what we want to do is make sure that you have um, XAMPP installed. So open browser and type in XAMPP download. So click on the first link and then it should take you to my, um, Apache Friends website. So you want to click on the um, most recent version of PHP and then download the um, version of XAMPP that is compatible with your system. So XAMPP is going to let us pretty much host the MySQL database and let us interact with our database. Cool. So once you've got that installed, you can go in your Windows search bar and type in XAMPP and then it will come up with a pop-up saying XAMPP control. So that's what you want to open up. So I'm going to go ahead and open mine up, which is already in my um, taskbar down here. So I'm going to click that and this is what it looks like. So once you have it open, what you want to do is click on start the Apache server because that's going to let us have the GUI version of MySQL and then click on start for the MySQL so that we can interact with our database. Cool. So the second requirement for this is to actually have our Python module for this installed as well. So what you want to do is open up CMD or command prompt. Uh, make sure you have pip installed and then you type in pip install um, mysql the hyphen connector hyphen hyphen then press enter. Now mine already says requirement already satisfied because I've already got this installed. So if you guys haven't got this installed already, make sure you run this command and have it installed successfully. So once you're done with that, our setup is then complete. So what I'm going to do first of all is go ahead and open up MySQL admin so that I can create the database for our system. So we're going to be working backwards for our system. Cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. So this is the user interface for MySQL. If you don't want to write queries and you want to do everything using the GUI. So in the last tutorial, I did show how to use queries, but in this tutorial, just to save time, we're going to be using GUI instead of the queries. So I'm going to click on new and open a new database. We're going to call this database college because it's a college management system. So database is going to be called college. Let's create that up. Now in our college database, we can have a couple of tables. Okay, I'm opening the wrong one. So I click on college and it says no tables found because quite rightfully we have no tables in here. So we're going to have a couple of tables in here. Our first table is going to be called users. So this table is pretty much going to store all the users that are um, that exist on our server. So it will store the username, it will store the password and it will also store the privilege. So whether it's a student account or a teacher account because our web um, our college management system is going to allow an account for teachers and an, and an account for students. Cool. So let's open this up and click on go. So once you click on go, it'll take a second to load and it'll let you create fields for your table. So I'm going to create an ID field, which is going to be an automatically incremented field. So if I go to my right side, there is an AI field up here. I want to tick that box to make sure this is automatically incremented. So what this means is that it's automatically increments the ID by plus one each time a new record is added. Cool. So I'm going to go back. That's my ID done. Don't change anything else in there. Now in my users database, I also want to have a username so that we can refer to the user. I'm going to saving. I'm going to be saving that as a worker or a ver um, variable character. And then 255 because that's just the max for it. Um, if you want to go with good practice, you would obviously go with something about I would say 25 to 30 because that's the max limit for a username and that should be okay but we're just going to be creating this for fun as like a beginner's project so that's fine I'm going to create a password field and I'm going to be saving this as a variable character as well again I'm going to go with the max so that we don't run into any errors for now 
and lastly as i said we're going to have a privilege field which is going to be a variable character as well because we're going to be storing strings in there and this variable um, privilege um, field would either store a teacher or a student string which will signify what type of an account it is let's save this up and once i've saved if I open up my college database now, I have a users table in there, which is where my user accounts for all the people are going to be stored. Now we're going to have an admin account on this console application that's going to be able to register student or teacher accounts. So essentially this admin account would be the technician who has all the privileges and is able to register anyone. Now our privilege will um, specify whether the account has more privilege than the other because students are going to have less privileges than the teachers obviously. Teachers will be able to take registers and all that stuff whereas students will be able to do uh, not a lot of admin stuff anyway. So that's our basic stuff done which is enough for this tutorial so we're only going to be doing up to allowing the user to, allowing the admin to log in, um, allowing the you admin to create a teacher account allowing the admin to create a student account um, and allowing the admin to delete any of those accounts so that's what we're going to be covering in today's tutorial so let's go ahead and create our file now because we've done the back end ish of our of our tutorial today so i'm going to go ahead and create a new text document and call this college um, system and then i'm going to change the extension to pi because we're coding in python obviously now let's open this up in Visual Studio so let's open up Visual Studio code I forgot I could do that in there um, and then let's just drag this in here cool so we have that done now so we can actually start coding our application now so first off what we want to do is actually import what we need so we need only the MySQL module in this so I'm going to do import mysql.connector which is the class that lets us connect to our MySQL database um, as MySQL so that we can refer to it easily now we're going to initialize our database in here so database equals so db stands for database it's just a variable and we're going to use our mysql object that we just initialized dot connect which is one of the methods it has and then we need to provide it with our host which is going to be localhost as default your mysql um, database will be hosted on these parameters user is going to be root unless you've changed it password is going to be blank by default and my database as i know is called college because if we go back to my PHP my admin, PHP my admin, the database name is college because we called it that. Cool. So once that's done, that just means my database has connected successfully. Now I'm not going to be adding any try and accept in here, but if you want to, you can do it for good practice. So I'm going to also initialize a command handler variable in here, which is going to be an object um, of database dot cursor. So this cursor is pretty much going to allow us to run different queries such as delete, um, insert, edit, or so on. So I'm also going to pass in buffered equals true so that we can run multiple queries on this without having any errors. Cool. Now the first function that we actually want to program in here is going to be called our main function. So our main function is going to be holding the main menu for our program. So main, and then this is going to be an infinite loop. So while one we're going to print out a menu for the user so we're going to say a nice message welcome to the college system and uh, we're going to print a blank line i know i can do forward slash n but it's just easier for me to use speech marks for now and we're going to say um, option one is going to be login as a student i'm going to copy this line and paste it down here i'm going to change the option one to option two and i'm going to say login as teacher and then lastly we're going to print that line again but the option is going to change to three and we're going to say login as admin so these are the three options that our main menu is going to have so every time the user logs in into or opens up our application this is the main menu is going to be greeted to or if they log out of an account so now we're going to have to take the input so user option equals input um, string option or let's just say yeah let's just say option so the user will enter the number corresponding to the option they want to select. So if they wanted to log in as teacher, they would type in two and so forth. So now we're going to have to write an if conditional for this. So if user option equals one, that means they want to do a student login. Okay, let's just scroll down a bit here. That means they want to do a student login. So I'm just going to type student login over here. 
Now I'm going to also do an elif. So elif user option equals two. That means the user wants to do a teacher based login. So teacher login. And we need to do elif user option equals three. That means they want to do an admin login. Now I'm going to print admin login here just so that we can see how this works. And then lastly, I'm going to print else print uh, no valid option was selected. So let's go ahead and run this main function down here because it's already stored as a function. We've got to run it as well. Main. And then let's run this to see if it actually works. Cool. So we have a nice little command line application that says welcome to the college system, login as student, login as teacher or login as admin. Let's press on one and it says student login. Um, now let's press on, let's see, let's press on two and it says teacher login and let's press on three and it says admin login. So it is recognizing the options we're selecting and we have, if I type in some gibberish in here, it says no valid option was selected, which means it's working fine. Cool, let's close this off. Now insert, we're only going to be programming the admin login for today because the user should be able to register students or teacher accounts and be able to delete them. That's what the admin is able to do for the current moment in this tutorial. So I'm going to get rid of admin login in here and we're actually going to assign this to a authentication function. So authenticate admin, so off admin, which stands for authenticate admin. So we're going to create a function that's going to grab the username and password from the um, person trying to log in and verify whether they are the actual admin to the system or not. Now, if the username and password is correct, they will open a session for the admin. If not, they will just let the admin know that, hey, this um, user information is wrong and the admin will be redirected back to this menu. Cool. So let's go ahead and code that function now. Uh, let's put this above main. So def, because we're creating a new function and we're going to call this off admin, authorize admin. So in my authorize admin, what we're going to do first is we're going to print a blank line. Once again, as I said, I could do forward slash n, but I just can't be asked for today. So I'm going to just do that. Admin login is going to be the title. Print another blank line. And then we're going to do a username input. So username equals input string username. So pretty, so far we're just doing a lot of basic stuff and just um, trying to practice the initial stuff. And then for the password, we're taking a string input as well of password. Cool. So now that we've got the input from the user, we got to match it. So if username equals admin. Now by default, this is not good practice, but by default, I'm making sure that the admin password is saved and embedded in our program and not on our server. Because if it was on our server, anyone would be able to change it. But if it's embedded in our actual program, no one would be actually able to change it. It would just be stuck there unless it's like reverse compiled, which is not the case in most um, most places. So anyway, if the username equals admin, we want to authenticate the password. So we say if password equals, let's just say the admin had a stupid password called password. Password, that means the username and password is correct. So we're going to do admin. Okay, let's just do admin session, which is going to be a function we create in a moment. Else we say print um, incorrect password over here. And if it's the else for the other one, we're going to say print uh, login details not recognized. And then that should be it. Cool. So now it's going to complain that the admin session um, function doesn't exist. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and create a new function called admin session, def admin session. Now this function is only going to be run if the username and password provided by the admin is correct. So print login success. Welcome. Oops, welcome admin. Cool. Let's run this up to just test run this whole thing. Now we're obviously just logging in as an admin because we only have that function. So three, now it says admin login and we're being asked for a username. So I'm going to type in the username, which is admin. I'm going to type in the password as password. And as you see, it says login success, welcome admin. So it's running the function that is um, admin session, which is fine. That's what we want it to do. 
Now let's log in again, but we'll log in using the wrong credentials. So I'm going to type in a gibberish username, gibberish password, and it says um, login details are not recognized. So as you see, it's working fine. Cool. So now let's actually program this admin session so that admin can have a menu once he or she has logged in. So we're going to print the menu for the admin. Let's take a look. Do, 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 do. So for the menu, what we're going to do is actually create a while loop here because the um, admin should be able to pretty much be able to access this menu on and on again when they've logged in unless they log out. So unless they log out, this menu will be recurring as a loop. So print admin menu and then we're going to let's just copy this off, paste it right here and then let's give it some options. So option one, oh my god, option one is going to be register new student now let's copy this um, and then paste it here paste and paste and paste cool so copying and pasting is really great because it saves me a lot of time so i'm going to change the numbers to one two three four five so there's five options now it's going to be register new student then it's going to be register new teacher then it's going to be delete existing student existing student Oops. oh what's on here okay delete let's just make this three caps delete existing student and we will do delete existing teacher so these two options will allow the user admin to either delete an existing student or an existing teacher account information cool and then lastly we want a log out button so that the user can go back to our other menu just in case he doesn't want to be stuck in this menu for the whole time cool so what we need to do first is create a user option variable again so that we grab the user option input string option Oops. cool and then we gotta do our if statements to check what the user is selecting so let's do if user option equals one this means that they want to register a new student. So what we want to do first is print um, a blank line. Then we're going to print again, register a new student. And then here we need to grab the username that the admin wants to give the student. So username equals input string, come on, go away. Input string and then student username okay let's do you username so we need to grab the username that the admin wants to give the new student and the password that the admin wants to give the new student so they can log in later password equals input string and student password now these this information that's gathered here from the admin is going to be stored in our database in a second so once they're done we're going to save these values username and password into a variable called query values so we're going to type in username in there and password in there so this um, variable right here called query values is going to be passed in later into our query so that the query can know what the value of username and password is to be stored in our database cool so what we're going to do now is go on and run our command handler which is the object that's going to help us run um, pretty much any command or queries on our SQL database. So command handler dot execute insert into users, which was the table that we created. Now we need to mention what fields we're inserting. We don't need to insert ID because that's auto incremented. We're inserting username, password, and privilege. Cool. And then since we've mentioned what fields we'll be entering, we need to type in values and then we need to specify what values we're going to be passing through. So the first two values, which are username and password, are going to be passed in as a string formatter. So just um, percentage sign and S, because we're going to be passing be passing them as the query values or query vals variable right here. We're going to be passing them using that variable. So just leave them as string formatters. And then the last value is going to be student. So this account privilege is going to be set to student because it's a student account. And lastly, once the speech mark is done, you want to do a comma and pass in the query values, which is going to be replacing this S with the actual username the user entered and replacing the second S with the actual password the user entered. Now, if everything was fine, we're going to do a database.commit in here to save all the changes to database. 
and then print username plus um username plus a space has been registered as a student cool let's run this up and see if this actually works so let's scroll this up um let's press on three because we want to log in as an admin uh, i'm going to type in the admin username which is admin and the password is password now we have our admin menu which is nicely showing up obviously we only have um register as a register new student option showing up only that at the moment so let's press one so as we programmed it to is asking us for a student username let's just call him mark and student password is going to be mark one two three cool let's press enter and then it took a second and it says mark has been registered as a student and then we have our admin menu again because it's looping through and it will keep doing that until we um, click on logout which is going to be programmed later Let's actually verify if this worked by refreshing our admin PHP my admin page, going to our users ta um, table, and voila, it has worked. We have an ID of one, username mark, password mark123, and privilege has been set to student because it's a student account. Now we're going to be doing um, pretty much the same for the teacher account, so we can actually copy and paste, which is the wonderful bit about this. So the option one was creating a student account. Now option two is creating a teacher account. For which what I'm going to do is type in an elif here. So elif user option equals two. What we're going to be doing is literally copying and pasting this whole lot. Because it's literally the same thing. The only thing that will change is the account privilege. And then these little words right here. Register new teacher instead. And then student username will change to teacher username and teacher password. Then the, the rest remains the same, I believe. And the only bit that will change in here is where you run the query using command handler, you would change um, the student. Oops, what did I do there? You change the student to teacher now, because this is a teacher account and that should be stored like that in the database. And then lastly, um, username has been registered as a teacher, not as a student. Let's do that. We'll run this and see if that works. Okay, go up. Let's log in as admin using option three, admin and password. Let's register a teacher. Teacher username is going to be Matthew and it's going to be Matt123. And as you see, Matthew has been registered as a teacher. Now let's go ahead and open up our my admin again and refresh this. Go ahead and see our users table. And as you see, the it worked. It says ID2, Matthew, and Matt123. And the difference is that this account has been privileged to a teacher account. So we know how to make the distinguish between them using the privilege tab. Cool. So that's working flawlessly. Let's go ahead and program the delete functions as well. And then the logout button. So elif. Oops. Let's go ahead and do it over here. Elif user option equals three. That would be for deleting an existing account which is for a student. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to be doing that. So first off, we're going to print a blank line like we always did. Then we're going to print delete um, existing student account. And then what we're going to be doing next is actually gathering the username so that we can delete that actual user from our database. So username equals input string um, student username so we need the student's username so that we can look up the student in our users table and then delete that um, specific user mentioned in here from the table so that it the account has been deleted forever and this student will no longer be able to pretty much log into that account cool so once that's done we want to run in our query values variable again username is going to be stored in there as well as we're going to be storing student as the second parenthesis. The second parenthesis is stored as student because um, the account privilege we're going to be looking for is a student account. So we don't want to delete any um, teacher that has the same username. We only want to delete any student that has the same username. Cool. So once our query var values variable is done, we're going to do command handler dot execute and then let's write our query. The query is going to be delete from a users table where oops, where username equals 
Now we're going to use our string formatter, percentage %s because we're going to be providing the values in a moment and privilege equals um, percentage %s because we're going to be providing that as a value as well. Cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a comma in here and pass in the query values. Now once that's done, I'm going to print, uh, I'm going to do a database.commit to save all the changes of the deletion that's done. Now we need a bit of validation here. So if command handler dot row counts, which means, um, so what this does is it tells us how many rows were affected. So if no rows were affected, it will return zero or anything less than zero. So if no rows were affected, that means there was no user with the username provided. So that means there was no records that were deleted and no user with that username existed. So that's what we want to um, find out whether the user with that username actually existed or not. So if the user did exist, so if the handler.row count is less than one, that means it didn't exist. We're just going to print out user not found because that user does not exist. That's why no rows were affected. Else, we're going to print out. Oops, we're going to print out uh, username plus, and then has been deleted. Cool. Now let's quickly run this to see if it worked. It should have worked. Um, now we're going to be deleting a student account. So let's log in as admin. Admin password. Um, option number three. Student username. Let me see what student I had saved up. It was mark okay so let's type in mark and it says mark has been deleted let's go ahead and check if he has actually been deleted or not refresh and if you see right here we only have matthew uh, which was a teacher account so um, mark which was a student account has been deleted through our program now let's try and see if our validation is working so let's go through our admin menu again click on three and then provide a student name that doesn't exist so some gibberish and it says user not found so it is working perfect now as you may have already guessed we can copy and paste this function for our teacher function too because there's only going to be one value that changes which is the account privilege so i'm going to copy this then we're going to go ahead and do the elif statement so elif user option equals four i believe yep four now we paste all of this down here then we change these little words to from student to teacher so it's pretty simple what we're doing right here we're just playing with queries it's just a little practice um, kind of tutorial for you guys to like brush up your skills with this now you're going to change the query values to username and teacher because it's a teacher account privilege needs to be equal to teacher um, where username equals that and privilege equals that which is fine um, user not found has been deleted so cool that should have worked let's go ahead and see if this works so I'm going to log in as admin again. Let's just put this all the way up. Log in as admin. Uh, username is going to be admin password. Uh, let's go on option number four because we want to delete a teacher. Uh, and let's, okay, literally existing teacher account, but it's saying student teacher. Okay, <laughs> made a mistake there, but I'll fix that in a moment. So I'm going to type in gibberish and it says user not found. And let's press on option four again. Let's actually type in Matthew. And it says Matthew has been deleted. Let's verify this. Refresh. And as you see, the table is actually empty. MySQL returned an empty result. Zero rows. So that's working perfectly. Let's just gonna, I'm just gonna have to change teacher student to, I uh, mean, teacher username. So we're gonna go and change that right now. So teacher username. Cool. So that's that sorted. And now the last and last but not the least function for this tutorial right here for the admin panel to be finished is the logout button which is the easiest one. So we're going to do an elif in here which is going to be for option 5. So elif, oops, elif user option equals 5. What we want to do is just break. So what happens here is since we're already in a loop in a, if, you, if I go to my main function, we're already in a loop. And when we run the other function, which is admin session, we're in a second loop. So when I break from my second loop, I am returned back to my first loop. So we'll be returned to this main program right here as soon as we break out. So that will be like a little logout, logout thing going on. So that should work just fine. 
And then lastly, I'm going to do an else just for validation. So if the user types in any gibberish, we'll just say print no valid, no valid option selected. Cool. Let's run this up to see if this worked. And I'm going to log in as uh, admin because that's the only feature working currently. Admin and password. And we're going to run the last option, which is logout five. And as you see right here, we have logged out from our admin um, because it no longer says admin menu. It only says welcome to the college system, which is the main menu for the system. Now, if I want to log in as admin again, I'd have to press three and then type in the username and password again because we've already logged out. So that was it for today's tutorial, guys. Hope you have enjoyed this amazing tutorial and brushed up your skills on MySQL. If you guys have any future ideas for videos, drop them in the community tab under my post. Um, ideas for new videos. And if you guys would like to support the channel directly, you can do so by signing up as a patron using the Patreon link in the description. Do consider joining the Discord channel for a bit of fun and programming ideas. Um, also, follow up my socials. Thank you guys once again for all the support you've been showing. I am very grateful for it. Um, if you guys would like to see my channel grow, I'd really appreciate you for sh if you could share it and ask your friends and family to subscribe. And guys, I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial, which is part two for this series until we finish the college system. Peace.